What's up, you guys? It is your host, Galadon. Thank you so much for stopping by. We are going to be going over some highlights, some clutch battles from a recent Clash Royale tournament. This one I held on Camcord. It's where I live stream. It was a $100 tournament, meaning the winner got $100 worth of gems. Also, there were prizes for second, third, and fourth. So check it out. I stream all the time. There is the URL. You can follow me and never miss a stream. And maybe you guys could have been in this tournament. I can hear you guys already going, man, these guys aren't that good. I could have beaten that guy. Look at what he did. I, I could beat that Lava Hound. Who brings a Lava Hound to a tournament? But anyway, this guy did advance all the way down. Nems97 and M Racing. They started out in a group of 48 players. So we had 48 join in one clan, and we ran a single elimination tournament. Took about three hours before we got down to the final four players. But part of the reason for the unusual decks is this was a restricted tournament. And what I mean by that is you were not allowed to bring a Royal Giant, and you were not allowed to bring a Hog Rider. If one was in your deck, you were automatically disqualified. So I kind of forced some more unusual decks. I wanted to get away from the standard meta that we see over and over again, and I wanted to see what players could put together without using a Hog Rider or Royal Giant. Now we saw some pretty interesting exchanges, and again, Nems97 beat several other players to make it to the semifinals using his Lava Hound deck, Lava Hounds and Minions, of course, and M Racing with Sparky holding it up and getting down there to the semis as well. Now, if you guys had ideas for other tournament restrictions, requirements, exclusions, you know, like Bloodbath, King of the Heap, uh, maybe everybody has to use the exact same deck, I would love to hear what you guys think, what suggestions you guys might have for a tournament that would make it interesting, a little different than the tournaments that we're used to seeing all the time. But right here, we've got Sparky crossing the river and the Lava Hound on the other side, both being countered effectively. The Lava Pups do get to the tower, but not a lot of damage, although it was enough to give Nems97 just a bit of an advantage right there. He was disappointed. He wanted a lot more getting that Lava Hound so close, but it's got to be coupled with something else if you're going to get any significant amount of damage in on that tower. All right, so M Racing, pretty typical there, although the Sparky dropped pretty early. You kind of know it's coming. That giant almost always going to be in front of the Sparky. And check out the wizard sandwiched in between Dragon and Lava Hound on the left. So both guys pushing hard and having put their push together and sent it on its way, now they have to turn and switch their focus to defense. And the Lava Hound right on top of the tower and it's taking damage. The minions didn't get the job done. There go the Lava Pups. There goes the giant as well. 20 seconds left and M Racing gets to his tower because of Sparky, of course. Sure enough, Sparky got to the tower, finished it off, and it looks like that is going to be the end of it. Nems97 at this point will be eliminated from the tournament, and M Racing went to the finals to face the winner of the next battle. Now, it's got to be frustrating for those guys to have beaten so many other players to make it this far and end up in third and fourth place, but they did also get gift cards, so not all was lost. Now we've got Pankaj and Vicky, and they are competing for the other spot in the final to go after that $100 gift card. Now right away in this battle, you'll notice that both players have Inferno Towers, and I think that's probably because it trades well against most big tank troops, and with the Hog being banned, really that was the only popular card that the Inferno Tower doesn't trade well against. Maybe it's not ideal against the Mini P.E.K.K.A., but Pankaj uses it there and it does prevent the P.E.K.K.A. from getting to the tower. But again, it works well against the Golems, against P.E.K.K.A.s, and of course against Lava Hounds that we saw a lot of, and Giants, Giant Balloon, Giant Sparky, anything like that. The Inferno Tower is going to be effective. So probably that's why we saw that. Kind of an interesting phenomenon to see when you take out the Hog Rider, suddenly in come the Inferno Towers. Of course, past the Inferno Towers and the Freeze Spells, these decks are very different one is Minor Mini P.E.K.K.A., the other one is Balloon, and the Balloon doesn't get there. Pankaj not so happy, Vicky doing a great job of stopping that push, and the minions get stopped as well, back into reset with about a minute 45 left. Now you can see the confetti streaming all over the place, I can't remember exactly how many spectators we had, but at least in the early battles it was full, we had so many people watching of course in the game and of course in the stream as well. It just makes it a lot of fun, people rooting for their favorite player or maybe 
If they don't know the player, they're rooting for a specific strategy. Right here, the minor Mini Pekka isn't quite going to work out, but the Mini Pekka is going to get in. And those two shots were huge. That was about a thousand hit points off that tower. And that is a huge advantage for Vicky that late in a tournament when you know that these players are going to be pretty evenly matched. It's not like you're running up against somebody randomly in ladder play. You're playing another player who has beaten several other guys to get to the semifinal spot. And that's why I love these tournaments and that's why I hope that Clash Team integrates tournaments into the game somehow. It is so much more fun to face somebody that you know is an above average player who is going to put up a tough battle. Although you guys again might be claiming you could have crushed these guys. I don't know. Come to a future tournament and we will find out. Alright, so we're down into the final 30 seconds. Neither player having gotten a lot of damage on the other player's tower. A little bit more from the miner in the back of the pack. The mini P.E.K.K.A. countered pretty easily, but that lead right there for Vicky, less than 800 hit points on that tower, is significant. The fireball can't quite one-shot the wizard at tournament levels, but here comes the balloon. It looks like it is clear of the Inferno Tower just barely, but a zap spell slows it down. The freeze just misses the minions, and that right there could have been the outcome of this battle. The freeze coming a split second too late. Didn't catch the minions, the miner, the fireball, and that is it. Vicky advances to the finals to face M Racing. And I have to tell you that Vicky or Vicky was dominating throughout this entire tournament. Now, this would be a three of five contest right here. Best three of five wins in the finals. So M Racing and Vicky played multiple matches, and we join with about a minute 45 left in this one with Vicky putting together a big push with the minions, with the princess, with the miner, just about getting that tower down. The zap spell manages to stop Sparky, and Sparky falls to the mini P.E.K.K.A. before she gets a single shot on that right lane tower. And Vicky takes a tower down with about 90 seconds remaining. So that Miner, a tough card when used in combination with anything else. If it can grab the attention of the tower itself, allowing those other units to get in and do the massive damage, whether it be Minion, Minion Horde, Barbarians, any group of troops, even Goblins, are super dangerous if the Miner has grabbed the attention of that tower. Now... Vicky did a great job not only on offense, but of course on defense as well, countering the Sparky, countering pretty much anything that was coming Vicky's way, and solidly just running this tournament, never really threatened by any other player, getting down to the finals here, facing M Racing. It wasn't that close in this battle, as Vicky had the upper hand the entire time, and every time the giant Sparky combination came down the lane, Vicky was ready to counter it. And you'll notice here, it looks like Sparky is about to get a shot off, but the perfectly timed zap spell and then the mini P.E.K.K.A. leave parts of that Sparky all over the place. It's like a going out of business sale at Pet Boys. There are just auto parts all over the ground. So Vicky really just dominating. And you can see here as time's going to count down, this was the first of the three battles. Vicky taking it from M Racing, one crown to zero. And again, Vicky was just dominant throughout this entire tournament. There is the end of the first battle. We're going to move on to the middle of the second battle with about a minute 45 left once again, and it's still super close. You can see M Racing has gotten some damage on the right lane tower. Vicky on the left here in the bottom left corner. So it's still close, but again, Vicky bringing pretty much the same deck. The rules were that you were allowed to change your deck between battles. There were no restrictions other than once the friendly challenge went up, then you were no longer allowed to change. But here it comes again. This time it's the Miner and the Barbarians. And just one Barbarian is enough right there with that Miner to get that tower down to below 1,000 hit points. So again, I feel like this is a tough deck to play. There are many decks that are much easier to play. Hog Rider, Royal Giant, even Balloon Giant. I feel like the Minor Mini P.E.K.K.A. deck or the Minor Anything deck is really a deck that has a high risk and a high reward, but also takes a lot of practice and you have to have impeccable timing. The timing is so critical in this deck. If you don't get that Minor in at the right time, then the tower and the units are going to focus on the other high damaging troops. The Minor himself obviously could take a tower down, but that's generally not the idea with that deck. 
the Miner is more of a distraction than a DPS unit. He is pretty tanky and doesn't do a lot of damage on his own. Here again, Vicky doing a great job Forced back on defense with the Mini P.E.K.K.A., but stalling out M Racing's big push. Things looked tough, but as the smoke cleared, sure enough, here we go once again. The Miner gets in there, the Princess getting some damage on that tower, and the Miner finishes that tower off. Didn't need a lot, but it was just enough with 10 seconds left that Vicky was able to win the second battle, and we would move on to the final battle. As long as Vicky wins this next one, then Vicky wins the championship. Vicky, I, I still don't know if Vicky's a him or her, so I just say Vicky. All right, here it is. And this one starts out in overtime. This was so close down to the final two and a half minutes of overtime before Vicky got through with the minor again. That minor push with the fireball, getting in there, getting a lot of damage on that right lane tower. And unlike the last battle, you can see both players were pushing down the same lane, so it does make for a bit of a different dynamic. In this case, so often your defensive troops will become part of your offensive push. But right here, it's just another miner that's really all that is needed. The miner and the fireball finish it off once again for Vicky. So a combination of range damage right there gets Vicky the tournament win and the $100 gift card. Congratulations also to M Racing for second place and a $25 gift card. Will you be next? Make sure you come join one of my future tournaments. I will be holding them into the future so thank you as always for liking commenting subscribing sticking around all the way to the end of this episode and of course i hope to see you all back here again tomorrow for more full attacks Gally Dom, i come to your tournament but you didn't want me to win every single time. That would get boring.